Hi everybody. I was uh, over at a friend's mine a while back. He has been in the um, CB repair business ever since I can remember. Even way back when I was a young lad. And uh, when I was there he gave me this uh, old single generator. It's made by a company called Gall Incorporated. It's the model 1500. And it's just a basic um, CB single generator. It uses the uh, thumb wheels to set the frequency. The two is uh, stationary, and the second digit goes from six and seven. So it covers 26.965 to 27.405 megahertz attenuation. It starts at 0 0.3 microvolts all the way up to 100 microvolts. And then you got your fine um, knob for your output. It has a selectable switch for your RF output in microvolts or millivolts. Also has a built-in modulation adjustment in the meter for your mod modulation percentage. And you can go external modulation if needed. Uh, I picked this up and also pick this old beauty up and I have restored it and it is a train AM single sideband base station and uh, they made these for a while it is based off of the same circuit board that's inside the Cobra 2000 um, all but it does not have a frequency counter it has a clock no frequency counter in it I had one of these back in the early 80s and I sold it and wished I never would have. When I saw this one here, I went ahead and picked it up too. And it had a lot of mods inside that I didn't like. So I ripped all those out and put the radio back stock just like it came from the factory. All the limiters intact. You know, 40 channels. That's all the channels it covers. No uh, up and low channels in this radio. It's just completely stock. 40 channels. And uh, I got it restored and got that added to my collection now a lot of you might have noticed that I love radio equipment period I don't care if it's ham radio CB radio business band radio I love radio and it's so you know I picked this stuff up like this and uh, add it to my collection but it's a fun little rig to play with but anyway back on our single generator I have searched the web I have asked different friends and uh, I cannot find no information on this little single generator. Um, it does power up. It does put out a single. But uh, the problem is, is that I don't care where you put the uh, selector for your frequency. It's stuck on one frequency. I think it's 27.7103. So that tells me that the VCO is just running open. It's not locking. And uh, I'll tear this apart and show you a little bit of the inside of it. And have a peek at it. But if anybody uh, ever runs across one of these or, or have any information on it, I would love to have some on it. I'd like to fix this up and get it working and uh, like I said it's a little small compact unit about 9 inches wide 6 inches tall about 6 inches deep appears to be made somewhere around 1976 um, according to the date codes that I see on it and the serial number that's on the back of it and the serial number says 10 dash 13 dash 76 Gall Company Incorporated model 1500 so I'd like to get this fixed I got a friend of mine that's got back in electronics and I think this would be a nice little bit of gear for uh, for him to play around with with uh, aligning radios and uh, speaking of uh, you know aligning radios a lot of us would like to learn and, and get more into uh, ham radio repair but you know ham radios can be very complex and a little bit hard to follow and understand 
and if you want to uh, learn more about getting to the level working on ham radio I know I get uh, emails all the time asking this and that just a uh, little Cobra 29 to me one of the best radios that Cobra has ever made besides the Cobra 148 old style not the new style um, but the old style it's great radios easy to work on you know but instead of you know tackling a very complex ham radio you can pick these up for next to nothing heck some people give them to you uh, you can find them at yard sales five ten bucks some of them working some of them may not be working but you know just learning the ins and outs of how a CB radio works um, one of the first CB radios I ever worked on one like it is this old Midland 13-898B I bought this thing brand new when I was around uh, 14, 15 about mid 70s and uh, the radio cost around $289 back then but you know it's 23 channel crystal control single side band uh, great radio has a great receiver on it um, you know it's not a powerhouse but uh, it's it's a great radio and it meets FCC requirements you know radio is fully stock um, it works just as good today as it did the day I bought it um, I have had to go in and replace a few components down the line here and there but you know um, maybe in the future I'll look at um, doing a series on running basic radio you know in preparation for moving up to ham radio you know you can take a radio like this uh, this is like I say it's crystal control so you're looking at a crystal synthesizer versus a face lock loop um, one thing that I do not like to do to radios regardless of what kind it is is drill holes and, and modify radios I like everything to appear stock um, if I was to put you know expand this radio from 23 channel to 40 channel I would probably come here on the uh, CBPA switch and put a relay and engage another board inside another synthesizer board to cover rest of the uh, missing channels but that's basically how I would do anything like that um, maybe uh, future videos if folks are interested will start a series on learning basic radio you know it's like this Cobra 29 um, it's not very very hard to figure out you know one thing if you can look at a radio if you got any basic electronic skills whatsoever you know looking in a radio and knowing which circuit to go to like you know automatically know your PLL circuit this is your mixer and output circuit the receive circuit here in the middle um, this is your audio modulator circuit you also gonna have your ACG your squelch and your OF circuit all in this uh, this area so you know just be able to look at the radio and pinpoint um, you know if you got a receiver problem where to go to you know just knowing these basic little things in a radio is a uh, a big help in learning to troubleshoot ham radio like I say great learning platforms CB radios you, you can't beat it um, and like I say you pick them up cheap you learn cheap um, you will have a you know need some basic uh, tools to to work on you know frequency counters uh, voltmeters um, single generators um, oscilloscopes different things um, heck you can even take a radio and uh, turn it into a single generator if you, if you need to so you know I picked this radio up for like three dollars at a, uh, a yard sale one day and uh, I got it just for parts I mean it's cheap enough uh, would I attempt to go in and fix it yeah probably could um, I mean just a, a quick um, look over I can already see several problems with this radio one thing your final transistor is missing 
if we look right here in the back you can see this capacitor is uh, leaking electrolyte from the top also there's one down here beside this transformer that's leaking electrolyte. What caused that? I don't know it could be audio chip has caused um, this to blow its capacitors um, somebody could have hooked it up backwards and uh, shorted it out had the wrong size to use in it wouldn't blow so it started blowing components a lot of different things you can look at anyway like I say great great running platforms and you know working on these you don't have to worry about it you go trying to learn on a ham radio you probably could be asking for a lot of nightmares and troubles so back on our Gall 1500 I got it set got it plugged in got it powered up got it set at 3 microvolts uh, no modulation 27.205 megahertz and if we look at our spectrum analyzer let me get rid of that glare there we go you can see that we're center frequency here on our meter we at 27.2740 and uh, you can see the output on it and we can see our upper and lower side bands on either side doesn't matter where you set the uh, channel selector switch it is locked on one frequency so it definitely tells me that the VCO is just running wild it's not locking and uh, it's putting you know outputting the uh, wrong frequency so yeah that's what it's doing and uh, you know with, without any documentation on it the only thing I could do is go in and try to reverse engineer this thing and see if we can figure out and figure out the frequency scheme of the PLL and uh, see if we can find out what's going on with it but I would to try to attain some uh, information before I go through all that trouble you know it's it, it's a very cheap unit it's not the best of quality but it would do what someone needed in a pinch I don't know maybe Mike over at uh, Mike's Radio Repair has seen one of these or even has some documentation on this he has a lot of stuff and has a lot of information on different things if uh, no one has never seen his channel I'll link it down below Mike's a a great guy stand-up guy he uh, does things the way things are supposed to be done and uh, I really enjoy watching the videos he's put online I went ahead and removed the unit from his housing and you can see there's there's two boxes here I then took all the screws out of this one I'm not going to open this one up this is a small box uh, and what it is your input from your thumb wheels go into this box and it's probably got some dividers inside and then it goes into the main unit so we're going to turn it around go ahead and open up this main unit and across the top here you can see some uh, divider chips on the top board quick shot of the uh, the main board we have a 5 megahertz reference crystal as a tuner for the oscillator here um, several chips here some of them look like divider chips that's a 74 and 196 that is a uh, decade counter chip I don't know what that is we've got a uh, tunable inductor here maybe that sets the uh, VCO voltage it's hard to tell not really sure yet until we uh, start you know tracing the circuit down I know this one this yellow wire is coming up and loops around and goes back down to the board over here on the side there's a uh, another tuning coil little set screw at the top and 
appears to be another adjustable capacitor or something down in the bottom. Okay, I see two wires go into it on this side, from this board. Yep, output coming out from the coil into the attenuator, up and around and into this box here that's shielded for with all outputs on it for microvolts and millivolts. You see one circuit board here in the center, it's got a couple of ICs on it, a few capacitors. I see a bunch of little small capacitors here and there that needs to be tested. Um, power supply here on the other side. ACN transformer 24 volts and here into the supply with a uh, full way bridge rectifier and looks like some type of uh, yeah I'm seeing six diodes there but we got some negative voltages here also off these rails yeah. a couple of uh, voltage regulators couple more down here okay yeah so anyway uh, if anybody has any information on one of these or have seen one of them before I'd love to hear from it love to hear your comments down below so it'd be nice to get this working for my friend and let him take it and maybe uh, see if he can get some use out of it anyway uh, that should do it not a whole lot, just, uh, just want to do this little quick video and uh, mostly to try to find some information on this. It takes a little time to go in and reverse engineer this, especially with all the ICs and stuff in it, you know. Always takes a little while. It can be done. Anyway, we'll catch you next time.